Welcome to Radiology Case Review, Ultrasound of Torsion of the Appendix Testis. I'm Dr. Dan Colville from Radiologist Headquarters. This episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The beautiful images that you're about to see were obtained on a Samsung RS85 Prestige Ultrasound Unit. I'm going to show two pediatric cases of scrotal appendix torsion, highlighting key teaching points throughout. All right, let's start with case one. This was an eight-year-old boy that presented with intermittent testicular pain for about three days. So we're starting with a transverse view of the scrotum. There's the right testis and the left testis. And notice the left paratesticular tissues are heterogeneously echogenic. There's normal anterior right scrotal wall, but the left anterior scrotal wall is thickened. And with color Doppler imaging, we can see that there is hyperemia surrounding that left testis. Let's look more closely at the left testis because, of course, we want to exclude testicular torsion. So we see that there is some normal color Doppler flow within the testis. We want to confirm that with spectral Doppler imaging. And here we see normal arterial vascular waveform. So there's a normal systolic and diastolic contour. With early torsion, you can sometimes get peak systolic flow and absent diastolic flow, but this is normal. And we also see a normal venous waveform. That's important to evaluate because with early torsion, you might lose venous flow before arterial flow. And finally, it's important to evaluate the spermatic cord when there's ever a question of testicular torsion in a patient with scrotal pain because you may see the whirlpool sign where there's a twisting or a torsion knot of the spermatic cord, which is quite specific for torsion. But here we see a nice, normal, straight spermatic cord leading to a normal testis with vascular flow. Okay, so we've excluded active left testicular torsion. So what could be causing this patient's left scrotal pain? So as we look further, we can see here's the left testis, and then there's an adjacent hydrocele. And then we also see this heterogeneous enlarged epididymis. Again, there's that overlying anterior scrotal wall thickening. When we had color Doppler flow, that epididymis is markedly hyperemic. It has increased flow. Normally, the epididymis will have flow, but less than that of the testis. So this tells us that there's epididymitis, there's epididymal inflammation. And what could be causing that? Well, here's a sagittal cine clip showing the normal testis with this complex hydrocele. There's that enlarged heterogeneous epididymis. Now, do you see anything else that might be causing this patient's scrotal pain? Again, there's the normal testis, hydrocele, enlarged heterogeneous epididymis. But then what's this? This heterogeneously echogenic ovoid structure, that's a torus scrotal appendix. And when we isolate that for measurement, it measures about one centimeter in maximum dimension. Normally, the appendix testis will measure less than six millimeters, so this is abnormal. Here's a color Doppler evaluation showing that there's flow within the surrounding structures, but we don't see any flow within this appendix. Power Doppler flow is even more sensitive, again, not showing any flow within the appendix, but showing hyperemia in the adjacent epididymis. And this is an example of microvascular flow, which is excellent at detecting slow flow in small caliber vessels. On the Samsung RS85, it is known as MV flow, and you can see that it's exquisitely showing hyperemia within the epididymis and surrounding structures, but no flow within this enlarged heterogeneously echogenic torus appendix. And here's a cine clip showing that, again, we can see hyperemia in the surrounding tissues, normal flow within the testis, hyperemia within that epididymis, and then there's that torus appendix right there. All right, let's review key points for case one, and you can also find these in the episode show notes. So the appendix testis is a vestigial appendage, meaning it doesn't have any function. It's similar to the appendix in the abdomen, and it's usually located between the upper pole of the testis and the head of the epididymis. It's also known as the hydatid of Morgagni, and the incidence varies in the literature, but it's commonly present as a normal finding. We'll frequently see this on ultrasound just incidentally. There's also an appendix epididymis, which typically arises from the epididymal head, and it can be difficult to differentiate from the appendix testis given the similar location. Usually, though, that's not clinically relevant since the presentation and management of torus appendix is similar, regardless of scrotal location. So both of these appendages are often pedunculated, which increases the risk of torsion, and torsion occurs when the appendage twists, including the blood supply, and that causes pain. And torsion of the appendix testis is actually one of the most common causes of acute scrotal pain in prepubertal children. Some argue that it's the most common cause. And it's seen most commonly in patients ages 7 to 12, but it can occur at any age. And therefore, it's wise to include in the differential for any patients presenting with acute scrotum. So a normal appendix testis will typically be oval-shaped, less than 6 millimeters in size, homogeneously isoechoic to the epididymis, and shows little to no blood flow on color Doppler imaging. So lack of blood flow by itself is not a specific finding. That's often normal for these incidentally discovered scrotal appendages. 
However, a tourist appendix testis will typically be 6 millimeters or larger, and that's a fairly specific finding. The echogenicity is variable, and it may be mixed. It has been described as hypoechoic before 24 hours of torsion, and then more likely to be hyperechoic or heterogeneous after 24 hours, as in this case where the patient had pain for a few days. And often, hyperemia of surrounding structures with hydrocele and scrotal wall thickening is also present. Interestingly, these torus appendages can detach and become free-floating in the scrotum, so that may be a secondary finding of torsion. Over time, these can calcify and evolve into scrotal pearls or scrotalists that we often instantly encounter on ultrasound. All right, let's look at case two. So this was a 10-year-old boy with testicular pain, also about three to four days, and mostly right-sided. And here you can see a normally appearing left testis on this transverse image of the bilateral testicles, but then on the right, the testis is surrounded by this complex multiseptated hydrocele with scrotal wall thickening. When we add color Doppler, there's hyperemia indicating inflammation of that surrounding scrotal wall and paratesticular structures. We do see some flow again in the testis because we want to first and foremost exclude testicular torsion in any pediatric patient presenting with scrotal pain. And again, with power Doppler, which is more sensitive, this is directional power Doppler flow. We do see flow within the testis, further brought out with microvascular flow imaging and confirmed with spectral Doppler showing an intact arterial waveform, venous waveforms as well. And then finally, as in the prior case, we want to show a normal spermatic cord, which here we have that leading right into the scrotum with a normal testis. So no twisting, no torsion knot or whirlpool sign to indicate torsion. Okay, so then what's causing this for right scrotal pain? So if we move inferiorly to superiorly in the right hemiscrotum, we again see that right testis with a surrounding complex hydrocele collection within the scrotal sac. And at the mid aspect of the scrotum, we start to see this heterogeneously isoechoic ovoid structure. Could that be the epididymis? We see it again here. But when we turn sagittal, we can see that it's actually an isolated ovoid structure. And this is the adjacent epididymis, which is heterogeneous, similar to the last case, again with this surrounding complex hydrocele. And here's a sagittal cine clip of the right testis, again showing that we have a normal testis here, complex surrounding hydrocele, and then we have a heterogeneously thickened epididymis there. And in between the two is that torsed appendix, which we can see again right here. Now in this case, as I move back and forth, you can see there's that torsed appendix, and then there's a small echogenic stalk connecting it to the adjacent epididymal head showing that it's a pedunculated appendix. And in this case, we can more specifically describe it as a torsed epididymal appendix. And when we add color Doppler, similar to the previous case, there's no internal vascularity to this torsed appendix, but we do see hyperemia and reactive epididymitis in the adjacent epididymis, as well as the surrounding soft tissues. Now we're looking at a dual screen cine clip color transverse image, again showing the findings of the marked hyperemia surrounding the scrotum. Notice that there's the torsed epididymal appendix the adjacent hyperemic appendix and the normal testis right there. And again, the complex hydrocele. All right, final key points. So with torsion of a scrotal appendix, there tends to be pain localized to the upper pole of the testis or epididymis. And at physical examination, this may present with the blue dot sign appearing as a small palpable nodule at the superior aspect of the testis with bluish discoloration of the overlying skin. That corresponds to the ischemic appendix. Also, the chromasteric reflex is typically intact and the testicle not usually high riding, which is different from testicular torsion. But because of this pain localized to the epididymis and hyperemia of the epididymis, it can be difficult to differentiate from bacterial epididymitis on ultrasound, especially if the torsed appendix is not identified. But remember, in children, epididymitis is often secondary to inflammation from other causes such as direct trauma, torsion of a scrotal appendage, or urine reflux into the epididymis. And a urine dipstick and urinalysis is helpful to differentiate. So in this case, both of these patients had negative urinalysis evaluations, excluding bacterial infection. Treatment is typically conservative with pain management using analgesics, ice, and rest. And if this is not recognized and misdiagnosed as bacterial epididymitis, the patient may be treated unnecessarily with antibiotics. Now, there are sometimes cases where clinically and or radiologically, it can be difficult to differentiate from testicular torsion. And in those cases, if there's high concerns, scrotal exploration may be necessary. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you found this educational. Thank you again to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, a great way to support us is to subscribe to the video podcast on Spotify or Apple or click the subscribe button on YouTube. You can even subscribe to all three. Also, to see bonus teaching material posted throughout the week, please follow us on social media or click the YouTube community tab. Until next time, radiology is life. <laughs>